I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You're a spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben. And I host this episode with my colleague, Jonathan. How are you doing, Joe? Yes, I'm going great. And you? Oh, fine, fine. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what? This is our first episode of 2023. And this is very uh, awesome that uh, we have a special guest, uh, a very important person. Yeah, former manager. Uh, Yes, uh, exactly. (laughs) And uh, he has been involved uh, in a wrestling business for uh, many decades oh yeah and uh, also uh, he managed um, many important person as uh, Sid Justice uh, Adam Baum Giant Gonzalez Giant Gonzalez uh, Bird of uh, yes uh, and uh, the Uganda Giant Kamala Mr. Kamala yes and uh, we introduce yourself Mr. Uh, RV Whipple, man how are you today my friend I'm doing I'm- very well I'm, I'm here at home in Mississippi and uh Really looking forward to uh, having a nice conversation with my new uh, uh, Quebecoi friend. Yeah, this okay. is very appreciated, honestly. Thank you. Uh, you know that you are um, very busy, and uh, and if my, my memory is good, are you uh, involved in professional wrestling uh, again? So I, I saw on your uh, polo that you have a pro wrestling uh, mid-south. So uh, are you... Um, uh, in the wrestling business uh, again, my friend. I never left the wrestling business. I'm still. I've never left in 44 years. Um, that's this is a, a small promotion out of Dyersburg, Tennessee, which is about two hours north of where I live in the Memphis area. And I I help out the promotion up there. I do some special ring announcing and guest refereeing and just help uh, help the young guys. You know, but you no, know, I've been involved in the business for many many years and hadn't stopped and. Uh, I've been in the business 44 years. I'm hoping to make at least 50 before I call it a day in the business. So, no, I'm uh, – when you say again, it's funny because, no, I never left the business. I'm still part of it uh, very much. And uh, you can share all your experience with one uh, young guy. So this is uh, awesome, honestly. And uh, we can go forward with uh, other questions. So go ahead, my friend. Uh, so uh, yeah, of course, uh, Mr. Lauer. Uh, at what age uh, did you start to get interested in pro wrestling? Uh, in 1979, when I was 14 years old, is when I began uh, this long uh, road I've been on ever since. Uh, 14 years old. So uh, uh, yeah, and I'll be 58 this year. So that shows you that been it's been a long time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's long time ago. Uh, 44 years indeed. ago. Yeah, yeah. and um. We would like to uh, to know uh, what is your relationship with uh, uh, Jerry the King Lawler and uh, Sid U the um... yeah. Yeah. Jerry King Lawler is one of my dearest friends. Uh, we talk almost every day, or, or very close to it anyway, several times a week. Very close. He gave me my first break in the business. He opened the door for me when Jimmy Hart left CWA, which is what the Memphis promotion was known at, as at the time. Uh, when Jimmy Hart left to go to the World Wrestling Federation, uh, and you can't replace Jimmy Hart. He's one of a kind. So I would say I was his replacement, but I filled the position that he had been in um, and was uh, used as the top manager in the Memphis organization back then. So, uh, yeah, I was very, uh, very happy uh, to be given that position. And I really owe Lawler, there's three people I owe my career to Lawler. Sid, as you mentioned, another guy, Rocky Johnson. So yeah. those are the three people that really helped me, you know, get established in this profession. And I'm grateful very much to all three of them. Uh, you're talking about um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I have a little question uh, for you because uh, during the, uh, the pandemic uh, year, uh, so um, you receive a special gift, uh, gift uh, from um, uh, 
uh, Dwayne Johnson. And can you share with us uh, why you receive a, a brand new truck, a brand uh, F-150? Uh, this is a, uh, a dream come true, if you know what I mean. So uh, that that's a... Uh, yeah, I actually just drove it today. Uh, I don't drive it every day. I drive my other trucks. I don't want to... I want the Dwayne truck, which is what I call it, to last me the rest of my life. Um, wow. And my other truck, too, of course. But, um, you know, back when uh, Dwayne was about 14, I had uh, bought him his first car in okay. uh, downtown Nashville, Tennessee. So it was a cheap car. It was all junky car, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that's the best we could do at the time. So all these years later, I guess that was his way of returning the gesture. And I appreciate it more than I can explain. I appreciate him more than I can explain. It seems to be very grateful with uh, Pearson and he have a long memory. So uh, he seems to be a good person. Yeah. Oh, he's a great person. Him, his dad, God bless his soul, Rocky Johnson. His mom, who I'm still in touch with on a regular basis, uh, is like a family to me, you know. So, uh, yeah, he's he's we're very close and And I appreciate him very, very much. Good. Okay. In your WWE debut in the 90s, you managed the late Big Beauty Music. Do you do you remember why uh, that guy left the company? You know, and, and, and he was a good guy. You know, he, he was, and he's passed away now, so I certainly oh, don't want to kick any dirt on him. Um, his in-the-ring ability just wasn't, I don't think, up to uh, – WWE uh, standard, okay? It's not an insult to him or whatever. Everybody just doesn't have that uh, same uh, mindset or, or, or ability maybe, and maybe he was better suited for another organization. Um, so it's certainly nothing negative that happened as far as he didn't, you know, he wasn't on any kind of drugs or anything like that. He didn't get in fights or, you know, nothing like that. It was just, I just think he wasn't suited for the environment. That that is not a per not necessarily a perfect fit, but that it is what it is, my friend. Right. So, yes, exactly. So, uh, did you find uh, it a big challenge to replace a slick as uh, the Warlords uh, manager? No, I mean I didn't really think about it that way. Uh, nothing against Slick, you know. Uh, it was just that's the position position that they put me in at the time, and. Uh, And I went with it. I really like Warlord. I saw him about a year or so ago at an uh, autograph uh, <laughs> signing. Great guy, you know. Sure. So, uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it's just business. Wherever they put me with, I do the best I can for that individual and for the promoter or booker or whoever put me with that person. So, it was it was great. You know, I had no no issues. Cool, cool. So, um, okay. Uh, uh, despite uh, the missed run in of Papa Shango, uh, do you have a good memory of WrestleMania 8 in Usier Dome, Indianapolis, with wa which was your first and moreover, you managed Sid in the main event against the yeah. Royal Colgan? Well, it's a wonderful uh, thing. As far as the Papa Shango thing, I don't know. I wasn't privy to all that. I've had a lot of people ask me that question. <laughs> I just don't know. I really and truly don't know. But as far as just being able to say, that I was in the main part of the main event mm -hmm. in, in WrestleMania. That's, you know, it's something that uh, many people don't, you know, most people don't get a chance to be able to say. So that's quite a feather in my hat, quite an accomplishment. And, uh, and I just, you know, I'm grateful for that uh, opportunity. So it was, yeah, it was wonderful uh, to be a part of that. And I imagine that WrestleMania three is probably one of your uh, best uh, wrestling memory uh, of your entire life. Well, I wasn't with WWE yet at WrestleMania three, so uh, I I couldn't say that. I mean, it was a great event, obviously, but I was not uh, yet with WWE. So, uh, as far as it being a memory for me, I, I, I couldn't honestly say that. So about uh, WrestleMania, uh, my friend uh, uh, Nasrad Ben have a questions about WrestleMania nine. So yeah, we'd question. like to hear uh, from you about your experience at WrestleMania nine. When you manage uh, the late Giant Gonzalez against uh, The Undertaker? Yeah, you know, Gonzalez certainly wasn't Shawn Michaels or Jerry Lawler or Ric Flair when it comes to being an uh, in-the-ring uh, performer, but he was certainly a presence to be reckoned with. 
and a great guy. And I always got along really good with him. God bless him. Uh, it's just, you know, it's always wonderful to be, to be on the road with somebody that you really enjoy being with and enjoy traveling with. And he was a really, really good guy. So, you know, like I said, he wasn't the most technically sound athlete in the squared circle, but he was a good guy. And like I said, he was a, definitely an attraction. And you were definitely uh, the perfect fit because the guys was just uh, taller than ever. And you... Uh, you seven feet six? Yeah, um, if my I, memory is good. Yeah. And you have a, you have a, a, a small body. So uh, the combination <laughs> was just amazing, honestly, because... David and Goliath. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And um, yeah. uh, for, uh, for the television, it's... Uh, it's, it's uh, amazing. Uh, perfect. So... Um, And also about uh, WrestleMania, we remember <laughs> WrestleMania 10. Is there any popular reason why the um, <clears throat> sorry uh, the match between Earthquake and Adam Bomb at WrestleMania uh, 10 uh, was a squash? Uh, do, do, do you know? Uh, you remember why? why? Um, uh, I honestly don't. If I had to just guess and speculate, there was a lot of big matches on that card, uh, Macho Man against uh, Crush and uh, the ladder match uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. I think it was probably just a, a timing issue. That may be true. It may not be true. I can't say, but oh, what versus opinion, that's probably what it was. And a um, um, couple of weeks ago, we received Medusa and uh, we're talking, uh, we, we'll talk about WrestleMania 10. Yeah. Uh, against Lela Nikai. Yes, and Uh, this is, uh, as she said, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the best WrestleMania oh, yeah. of all time. So uh, this is very cool that you uh, you have been involved in this uh, WrestleMania, but not just uh, this one. As we uh, we said earlier, so you have been involved in WrestleMania uh, eight, nine, ten. So uh, uh, that that's very very cool. And uh, you, well, you know, uh, one thing that stands out to me about WrestleMania ten is. Uh, Burt Reynolds is one of the special guests, uh, the famous late movie star. And, <laughs> and the main event. Yeah, and everybody always said that, uh, oh, he's a, you know, he's a jerk. He's a, got a big ego. You want to stay away from him. He's he's not a nice person. Man, it couldn't be nothing further from the truth. He was, I got a picture on my wall in my other room okay. made with him. He was just the nicest, most friendliest guy. Wow. Uh, I can't speak to anybody else's dealings they ever had with him because maybe their experience with him was different, so I can't only speak for myself. But he was just honorable and very nice and friendly to me, and I was that, that stood out to me. You know, I'd watched him in a lot of movies and on TV and whatnot, and I just, he was, to me, he was just a super, super guy. So I, I that stood out for me. And just before, we're talking about a female uh, pro wrestler, so... Uh, you have been involved with uh, one of uh, one of them, so. Oh yeah, of course. In 1995, uh, you managed uh, the late uh, Berta Fee, who won the title against uh, uh, Alan Robles at SummerSlam '95. Uh, why did you disappear from TV uh, when she lost the women's title? Uh, well, I think it was I was transitioning into the the role I've continued to to do for years and years and years. Uh, you know, working behind the scenes, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and God rest her soul too. I hate that so many people have passed away. Um, uh, Rhonda, which is Bertha Faye's real name, Rhonda and I never got along. We just, we didn't click. We did fine at the ring and at ringside or whatever, you know, but as far as in life, we just didn't get along very well. So, uh, you know, I wasn't just really fired up about continuing uh, that situation any longer than I had to. In uh, 2000, uh, you became the first and only man to win the women, the women's championship. So, are are you happy to this uh, accomplishment? <laughs> and what is the the, the end goal? And uh, if we uh, remember, it was against uh, Stacy Carter, the cat, the ex-wife. Correct. Uh, yeah, you know, are you it's funny. it was a transitional match because I dropped the championship to Jacqueline Moore, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Jackie, very quickly thereafter. <laughs> But uh, honestly, 
even though it's goofy and it was a ladies' championship and I was dressed like a woman, I can honestly say that I was world champion in the WWE at one point. Yes, it was quick. It was basically for just for a day. But I can't. a lot of people can't say that either. So, you know, I, I have no problem saying that. And, hey, it's don't matter how I was dressed or what I was trying to, you know, portray, I was still a champion, a world champion. <laughs> Uh, that's very funny story. So, uh, for ending, uh, as usual, uh, my partner, uh, Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben, um, the reason why uh, the nickname's called uh, Nostradamus, it's all about the French prophet who, uh, who tried to predict uh, the future of, uh, of everything. So, um, as usual, at the end of our episode with when we have a uh, a special guest. So, uh, Nostradamus, Nostradamus Ben try to predict the future of our guest. So, go ahead, my friend. Uh, <laughs> I have a funny and a serious prediction for you. Okay, first, the, the, the funny, uh, you're going to be the manager of Barry Darso as RV Repo Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like Barry. <laughs> and, the, and the serious prediction... Uh, I predict that you're uh, you're gonna be uh, in the uh, inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame uh, in a few years, probably. I, by I appreciate period. that. A lot of people mentioned that to me, and I would consider that the the uh, highest honor uh, possible. So I think that would be a wonderful thing. Up until now, the biggest honor I've had is I was inducted into the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame last year or two years ago. Now you deserve um, it. Thank you. So that means a lot to me, and hopefully yeah, their prediction will come true. Uh, I don't know if me and Barry are up to my, another run, but as far as the Hall of Fame, I, I could go for that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lowry. Honestly, this is an honor and privilege that you can take a uh, uh, couple of uh, minutes with us. Uh, thank you so much for being here. So um, Very appreciated. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, thank you. I want to say God bless you. God bless America. God bless Canada. And I'll close you with this. It's like mama says, it bees that way sometimes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank day. You. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.